Hey folks, Nathan here, and today we're in the Canadian Arctic in Nunavut. And you know something I've always thought about? Sharpening. What exactly does it do to your image? I mean, I know it adds detail, but like, what under the hood is going on? Well, today we're gonna crack open Resolve, look under the hood and see exactly what is going on when you add sharpening. No opinions, just cold hard facts on the nuts and bolts on what's going on. And you may be wondering, what does the Canadian Arctic have to do with sharpening? Nothing at all. Let's get into the video. So here we have this Blackmagic RAW clip from a Pocket 4K, and I'm just using a color space transform to get us into Rec. 709. I'm going to add a new node with Alt S, and we're just going to be adjusting the sharpening. So we're in sharpening here and we're just going to bring our radius down. And you can see that it's definitely getting sharper and we can turn the node off and on again with Control D, but we wanna know exactly what's going on. We're gonna use a few tools. I'm gonna to go down into my waveform, into the options, and I'm gonna click Display Qualifier Focus. Now with our Qualifier tool, we can see exactly on the waveform where we are. So this is the window, this is his skin, and this is maybe a darker part of the image, and we can see that all on the waveform. Now I'm also going to right click and click show picker RGB value. This gives us the exact 8-bit RGB value for the red, green, and blue channels. So as you can see here, everything is very bright and around here everything is very dark and his skin has a bias towards the kind of red direction. We're also going to be using our highlight modes and specifically the highlight difference mode where we can see exactly what we are impacting and the changes that are being made. And to do this testing, we're going to come into the edit page and we're going to be using our generators. And we'll be using these to have some control so we know exactly what we're dealing with so there are less variables. And then we're just going to turn it into a compound clip so that we can see it in the color page. And we're going to start off with a solid gray and let's get started in the color page. So as you can see on our waveform, we have a solid gray color that does not change at all throughout the image. The RGB values stay consistent as well as this waveform line does not move at all. So what happens if we try adjusting the radius on a clip like this? Do we see any changes at all? Well, it doesn't look like making it any sharper does anything, nor does making it any softer. And we can also check our highlight difference and note that we are making no change at all. We're not seeing any differences. So while this initial test may seem pointless, it actually tells us something. It tells us that sharpening is dependent on luminance changes. If there are no changes in luminance value, sharpening is not gonna make a darn difference. So let's go on to our next example. We have a grayscale gradient going from left to right, from dark to bright, and you can notice that on the waveform and also on the RGB values as they get larger the further right you go across your image. So now let's try and adjust the radius to see if we notice any changes. So let's crank this sucker all the way down, and right off the bat, I'm not seeing any big changes on my waveform. And if we go into our highlight modes, can we notice anything? Well, we do see a slight bump on kind of either end of the waveform. And if we go back and turn it off and on, you can see the most subtle adjustment made on the very darkest and very brightest edges of the image. But I wouldn't count that as exactly sharpness having an impact. So let's try something. Let's create a node before this node by hitting Shift S on our keyboard. And now we're gonna bring the contrast up. So let's start cranking this up and see if we notice any differences. Now at around the 1.5 mark, let's see what happens if we turn it off and on again. Okay, it doesn't look like anything's really happening. And we can also check that in our difference here. So we're not seeing any changes there. So let's try increasing it more to around, let's say the 1.8, almost 1.9 mark. Now we can turn it off and on again. And we actually are seeing a slight change there. So let's go into our difference. Okay, so we're seeing something in this middle area and we're seeing a little bump. Now to make this more obvious, I am going to increase the scaling just so we can see that much more dramatic. So there's definitely something happening in the middle of the image here. And if we come out of our highlight difference, we'll notice that's where it goes from dark to light. So let's turn the sharpening effect off with Control D on our keyboard and let's see if we can notice anything with our RGB picker. So as we go from left to right, we will notice that it gets gradually brighter and brighter until we reach kind of the pivot point, which we can adjust with our pivot and our contrast 
as we know how contrast controls work. So as we approach this point, you can see it gets brighter and brighter until it reaches kind of an exponential growth where it shoots up in brightness and the growth kind of peters off and then clips at 255 because the data is being displayed in 8 bits. So 255 is our upper limit. So if we turn the sharpening effect back on, we do notice we get kind of a change around this pivot point. So it looks like something is going on here, but it's hard to tell exactly what's going on. So what this test tells us is that not just a change in luminance values is needed, but it needs to be an abrupt change in luminance values because as we increase the contrast more, you can see that sharpening is having an even bigger impact. And we can just go into our highlight difference and see it's having even a bigger impact as the contrast is increased or as we start to create kind of an edge here. And for the purposes of this video, we'll define an edge as an abrupt change in luminance values. As you can see on our waveform and RGB values, that's a rather abrupt change. So this tells me that sharpening only affects areas with abrupt changes or edges as we defined here. So let's go to our next test to see exactly what it's doing to edges. And here we have two different shades of gray. So on the left is darker and on the right is brighter. So now as we increase the sharpening radius, you'll notice we're seeing something on our waveform. It's getting brighter on the right side and darker on the left side. And as we check our differences, we will note that. So effectively, it's trying to increase contrast at that edge here. And if we wanna see that more dramatically, we can increase the scaling and you can see that it has a much greater effect as it brings us down to pure black on the left side right before the edge and pure white on the right side as it gradually kind of falls off. So this means that increasing sharpening is actually increasing the contrast of edges. And just for kicks, let's try in the opposite direction. So as we bump up our radius, so we start to blur the image, you'll notice that it's doing exactly that. It is decreasing the contrast at that edge. So if we turn it off, you can see we have a clear jump going from 65 up to 149. But as we turn the blurring back on, you'll notice we have this gradual change. And side note, it's also a great chance to show exactly what your HV ratio is doing as it's making that change more or less gradual. So now that we've proven that only edges are impacted by sharpening, let's take it back to a real world clip to see it in action. Let's bring this radius, weigh the math down, and we probably have some assumptions on what we're going to see when we go into the highlight difference mode. Well, is that what you were expecting? So we've proven that sharpening only impacts areas of abrupt changes in the luminance values or what we're calling edges, but it looks like it's affecting everything on this image. Well, what's going on here? Okay, let's go back into another test. So we're generating a grid with our grid effect and we have two different shades of gray. The thicker ones are darker and the skinnier ones are much brighter. So as we add a new node with Alt S, you already know what's going to happen. When increasing the radius, the contrast is decreased and when decreasing the radius, the contrast is increased. And we know that these areas will be impacted because they're edges, they're areas of abrupt luminance change. So let's just make it blurry so I can kind of show an example here. We can go back into our grid effect and we can adjust that luminance change so that it's closer and you can see it's still having an impact all the way up until it is exactly the same shade and no impact is had and it's just like the gray from before. But if we go in and just change that a little bit, it is then considered an edge. But you may not believe me, so fine. Let's prove that it is an edge by adding a new node with Alt S and then going into the Resolve Effects Stylize and going into our Edge Detect. And I'll just turn off the blur effect so that we can see that there are indeed edges there. This is what the Edge Detect tool is saying. And the only way that those edges go away is if we get it exactly the same shade. Oh, there you go. So now that's exactly the same shade, but if we decrease or increase it, it tells us that that is an edge. So this is kind of interesting. Let's go all the way back to the beginning here and we have our clip. We're now going to just reset this node and then add our edge detect tool. And you'll notice that it's detecting a bunch of edges. Because as we've defined earlier and proven, an edge is just an abrupt change in luminance levels and all of these areas are considered edges. So that's why as we increase our sharpening, we will note that it impacts a bunch of the image, not just what we would think of as edges because an edge is an abrupt change in luminance. Let's just go over one more thing. We're going to reset this node grade, go back into our edge detect tool, and now we can start to adjust the threshold. 
And now we can really start to get into what we would define as the edges of the image. And this is why there are all sorts of methods out there on setting your specific threshold as to what is defined as an edge or selecting specific areas of your image that you want to apply sharpening to because of how generally sharpening right out of the box applies to an image because sharpening is just increasing detail and increasing detail is just adding contrast to edges or abrupt changes in luminance value. So anyway, folks, that's how it works. And if you like the video, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for more videos like this. I mean, I'm in the freaking Arctic. Come on, give me a sub. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.